much. And so I feel sort of uh, really enjoyed the, the meeting. I learned a lot. I really thank the Amos for it. And then using sort of areas analogy of physics, I I always consider myself feel like a experimental physicist about say uh, two hundred years ago, trying to make steam engine working. And then I'm really trying to learn all the theories and the models from you guys. And, and, uh, and the one thing I probably can offer is I do understand how the data and information make work in practice. And uh, so I hope that I can use your theories and the two uh, in some way to confirm some of our approach is correct. And at the same time, I also try to use my experience to, if, but, uh, maybe not very quietly, try to evaluate it to see the value of your theories and the models. So I may refer to your talk from time to time. So what I'm going to talk about is uh, the, the a very simple way of thinking how the value of a visualization or how to improve the quality of the visualization. And uh, in some way, it's connected to uh, what you've been talking about so far. And visualization, obviously, like information, is a overloaded word. And uh, it could mean a visualization image. And uh, in this case, it could mean data, or some people refer to as information. And I'll come back to that topic again. And in, in other cases, visualization also implies a process. And uh, so it's become an algorithm for delivering uh, an, an information in some way, or converting data from one form to another form. And in that case, it would be probably close to uh, the future we'll talk about models and other things involving in that talk. And uh, then the, the talk I'm going to give is really concentrates on the, the recent uh, a panel we organized in the, the annual conference in our community uh, involving a light-hearted debate about the quality of visualization involving four of my colleagues. And, uh, and also, and uh, partially based on a, an, an article uh, that I've been co-writing with uh, a colleague Rita Otto and uh, Luciana. And uh, so it's a combination of the two of that. Let me just very quickly to summarize the, the field of visualization. Uh, as you all know, uh, the visualization is really uh, not that new. And, uh, and uh, uh, according to the history uh, findings in the archive, and uh, we can see uh, the, the earliest visualization uh, was created more than a thousand years old. And uh, there were sketch plotters and uh, pie charts about, the, about three or four hundred years ago, and, and uh, they have to be, uh, 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 certainly the, the, the various of our statistical graphics also created in similar time. And then a few uh, latest visualizations, such as parallel coordinates and volume range, with metric imaging and, and tree maps, uh, which are just met a colleague from uh, 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 Bench, uh, uh, the College of Bench and I was invented by him. And the other things I'm going to talk about, the video visualization, very briefly today as well. And uh, if you were looking back at the, the history of visualization, there's two major uh, jumps as a milestone in the history. Is the one is the state creator of statistical graphics, and uh, quite often attributed to uh, William uh, Prefair and, uh, and a few other uh, uh, people during that particular time. But people tend to forget actually one major contribution to the uh, big development in visualization at that time is actually the two developed at that time was the graphing paper. When you have the graphing paper and you can create a visualization much more easily and people start to really create a lot of different style of visualization at that time. And the second big jump is around the 1989-ish uh, time and when the computer starts to uh, really uh, become a tool for generating images and you can generate uh, visualization even quicker and, uh, and possibly pretty, and so on. And, uh, and uh, today we have a, a variety of type of visualizations around, and uh, they are usually uh, very much task-based, and, and uh, texture data, and natural data, temporary data, and so on. They depend on different type of data. Sometimes one type of data could also be a, a converted into um, a, a different type of visualization. So this is more like our 
Uh, Duncan was talking about in our community like categorization and ensemble of different visualization. And ideally, is not using the same approach. You can theoretically use the same approach, but you purposely separate them in some way. And so we had a fun panel uh, uh, last year, and, uh, and uh, which is on the quality of visualization. We deliberately have to work the bake off there to, to make it a, a debate. And uh, we have four colleagues, and I'm going to talk about that, and they representing four of sort in our area, and uh, I'm going to go through each school one by one in some way. And the, the panel actually was well received and it was given uh, the best pen, uh, panel award um, by the conference. And the motivation at that time was partially is related to uh, my involvement in the information theory and the look into how that related to it. So I tip, uh, often observing the communication community through the information theory. They are noticing the communication community, they have a uh, gigantic subject called quality of service or QS. And, uh, and in that, uh, the topic was introduced in 1994, but it's really become a quite fundamental concept in the communication field. Uh, it covers a variety of things from protocols, which you can uh, almost map into Alvin's uh, metrics, and they involve perceptual studies and, uh, and even more business like customer relationship management and so on. Um, so taking a much more engineering way of thinking, and then you wonder whether we have equivalent quality of visualization. And in fact, you can extend it if you like to, to extend it to the quality of information or quality of data in some way as visualization is really a, in its image form, uh, it is really a special form of data or deliver some kind of information. However, in our community, and uh, I only managed to find five publications on that topic of why in the communication, the quality of the service, uh, and I can find over 38,000 uh, publications in simply just by triple E and uh, the repository we have. So the panel, with involving four colleagues, and, uh, and uh, one colleague um, is uh, uh, Eddie Grula and from Vienna University. And, uh, and his argument is and uh, evaluating visualization, the quality of visualization essentially can be reduced to evaluating the algorithm. Somehow capture the PHS concept of models and about other things. And, uh, and, uh, and in some way, he said visualization were created by algorithms, and certainly the quality of visualization is related to the quality of algorithm. And the second thing is the A is also used to emphasize, and uh, if we have an algorithm, we have some way we can optimize it. So somehow capture some of the discussion today about uh, maximum entropy, mean entropy, and so on, and look at a variety of algorithms and so on. Uh, by the way, the Vienna group is known for their parties, so, so partially the picture or depict their party mood. Uh, my other colleague, um, um, uh, Penny uh, Renegans, uh, not far from here and from Baltimore County, uh, and, uh, and the chief argument is um, you can only evaluate that by empirical uh, studies and empirical evidence, and the through experiments such as perceptual ex uh, experiments and the link to the user in the loop in some way, but are conducted in a more a controlled way or managed way, uh, whether uh, uh, to generate some quantitative results and, uh, and some statistically significant uh, information about quality and the so on. Um, my third colleague is believe everything potentially can be measured, and that he's a metric person, and, uh, and in our community we have a, a variety of metrics already being proposed or measured quality of visualization. They are uh, measuring for uh, the level of abstraction. They are measuring for salient information. They are me measuring for reconstructability of visualization to reconstruct the original data. Uh, they, they, they are also uh, clustering and uh, potentially the uncertainty of visual uncertainty maybe the confusion cost to the user and a variety of things we can measure. So Matt is leading that particular element of uh, debate. Uh, last but, but not least, 
uh, and and uh, uh, Kelly Gaza, and and she was she from Texas University. She she ran a, a, a large uh, supercomputer center in, in the visualization operation team there, and uh, she has many many users, real users, and often have to deal with real applications. Uh, her approach thinking is at the end the user have to say it's usable, and uh, and then the moment. No, no, no matter what we say, the algorithm works, no matter the user study tells you, no matter the metrics tells you, if the user says it's not usable, fundamentally it's not usable. And uh, so in some way, that four <coughs> school of thought creates a very, very interesting debate during, uh, during the discussion about the conference. And uh, as, a, as a sort of um, uh, uh, convenience for that particular panel, then, uh, then I summarize the panel by highlighting draw the comparison with the isms in psychology, and, the, and since we have a very, very uh, quite a few different schools of thought and for psychology involved in many years, then uh, I compare them to make the connections in the sense to say they are actually connected to some of the early thinking psychology in some way. And uh, I'm not going to go into the detail, and uh, as I said, it's a likely hard, and we even suggest that we should change the name visualization to physiology and, uh, and to, to sort of just lighten up the debate in some way. Okay, so I'm really talk about the, 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 the background in terms of how the discussion and how the debate we have. But uh, the key question we actually really haven't really answered is what is really visualization is really for? And, and in some way, visualization is a kind of a, a process the data. It's data for converting a traditional data to a new form of data. And, uh, and hopefully, it delivers information more effectively. And uh, if you look in the literature in our, our subjects, then uh, typically, they always give the definition about visualization in the way as for gaining insight. So you can easily imagine people asking you what is really information is for, or what is really data for. You can also easily make such a comparison is for gaining insight. And uh, the only thing is some people were suggest that the visualization can amplify the cognition and, uh, and, uh, and will be more precise and revealing and, uh, and help think and solving problems and, uh, and very underlying structures. And, uh, and uh, so there's a lot of those kind of uh, definitions around. The key question was, what is really visualization for? And uh, as a part of a process in terms of dealing with data or converting data to information, whatever we think about. And in our subjects, we also have a, a really uh, very um, heated debate about so-called charge junk. And, uh, and uh, that's just, uh, the debate started roughly about 2000 revolution when Edward Tufty first published his book and illustrates uh, that perhaps people shouldn't use uh, the visualization that was on the top, which is created by an uh, of homes and so on. And uh, a few years back, and uh, oh, uh, two years back ago, and, uh, uh, Scott Bethman and, and in Canada and a few colleagues and conduct a user study to, to demonstrate actually has some advantages in conveying information for such, and particularly help memory, help the, the, the viewer to remember things. So the, so the key question is, even you argue that the, the visualization, so called the minimalism approach, the bottom visualization is considered in the textbook to be the best, and why sometimes people still keep producing visualization on top of that. And uh, the debate goes further after uh, Jessica Holman and, and others and published a paper in 2001 and, uh, and, and suggested a theoretical, only suggested in a theoretical, and underlying to suggest that might be a better approach or to explain why the on top works. And uh, that really attracted a few um, uh, very, very strong comments from Stephen Phil and in his blogs. And, uh, and uh, some of the things are have a quote here. If you're interested to read it, you can find it. And, uh, and certainly, he 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 believed he believed that a lot of those uh, scientific value for this study is simply wasn't there. And uh, then uh, 
um, working with the uh, Vita Borger as well as uh, Luciana, and uh, we conduct an ACE study and, and uh, published in 2012. It does confirm uh, that Scott Batman's finding was correct, is the, the visualization involving the, the a kind of a chart junk and doesn't help memory, uh, uh, memorization of the visualization. And uh, but also managed to find that there's some weakness in terms of uh, it's not helpful in finding the items in terms of speed looking for things in the, in the picture. So it's a slow down people's abilities to uh, viewing the uh, visualization in some way. And, uh, and in some way, that some whole debate on points things then, so we haven't really received any um, on, the, on the blogs or um, any comments directly towards that particular study. But, uh, let me take you back, since we have a few, I was worried about some of these pictures of very unscholarly, but since we have a few economics colleagues here, so I probably try to use this as an example. So, so imagine you are um, you were a stockbroker. And uh, you, you look at a chart just like that as a figure. And, uh, and uh, actually, very, very simple visualization we had about well, a thousand years ago, similar like that. And, uh, and you, what you need to do in most of the cases, your task involving really identify patterns. So you're looking for various patterns and, and uh, clusters. You may compare this one with the other ones, let's say you may compare one supermarket with share price with another supermarket share prices, you, you, you say that they are correlated to each other, or are they anom an anomaly patterns involving that? And then you identify certain patterns, and that all, also allow you to, to sort of redraw your memories in the previous ones and what's happened. And, uh, and in particular, making connection with the ad hoc knowledge or the models you have in your head. And uh, some models, you're thinking every time this pattern comes, you should buy or sell. Or ad hoc knowledge means you may dismiss certain information. You say, oh, I know the behind the information because the, the managing director is just about to design. And, uh, and, uh, so you heard some rumors, and the computer wouldn't know that. And uh, so those other things are making a connection involving that. And it, it allows you to um, uh, utilize the external memorization mechanism because you don't need to keep remember all the numbers and the so on. You just keep just quickly looking at that. And as I said, the stimulate hypothesis may say, ah, tomorrow, according to the current pattern, it should continue to rise. And the most important thing is tomorrow morning, you can come back, you can evaluate your hypothesis to say, it didn't rise. My hypothesis is wrong. On the whole, if you look at the whole process, there's not much statistical going on, or at least explicit statistical calculation going on. But on the whole, it saves the time. And the people make decisions very, very quickly by just looking at the picture. And uh, if you're thinking something in an alternative way, so you can have your data displayed as the numbers, and uh, even with a two uh, a, a sort of decimal point of accuracy, which is more accurate than the visualization. However, it's very difficult for you to identify patterns. It's very difficult for you to identify clusters, very difficult for you to make a comparison. And, uh, and in many ways, although it serves the external memorization, but it's fundamentally doesn't help you saving your time when you're making your decisions. And uh, quite often people also find that animation is cool. And in visualization, people always say, ah, let's, let's show some visualization app. So in this case, I animated the data here. And you can see the animation, and you can see all the numbers still have maintained the two decimal point of accuracy. But if I ask you, can you make a decision now after you're just looking at the animation? And you probably forgot the most of it. And you don't know actually what you see. And although it's cool, it's impressive, but in some way, this is not the best thing, but it's indicating the animation doesn't save your time. And may stimulate some hypothesis on the way that but certainly not. So the emphasis on in insights or the emphasis on in some way a, a sort of a, a glorified way of thinking, the problem solving and a variety of things way. And uh, may not necessarily actually capture the main 
actors of the task. So I, I draw a comparison with uh, uh, Alexander uh, Bell and when he invented the telephone. And he has this idealistic thinking what telephone can be used for. And, and he focused much on the content, on the semantics of the telephone. So in fact, he spent a lot of time and putting the telephone in the concert hall. And with the hypothesis, is people can listen to the concert from outside. But that was not the telephone used today. And so what is really telephone used is really for communication at the same time. In fact, when the, when the bell speaker his first time to the telephone, and he said, Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you. And that's already indicating it's the same time, it's because otherwise he has to walk to the next door, spend the time to call Mr. Watson to come to see him. Now he can just pick up the phone, say that, and it's saving time. So today, and certainly it's confirmed the telephone is a gigantic useful tool for saving time. Everywhere you talk to your friends, and, 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 and family members and colleagues, and it's really a tool for saving time. So in many ways, the visualization is a tool for saving time. I'm not going through the detail. There are many ways the visualization will save time. They overview, they omit some information you don't need to know, and the external memorization, hypothesis generation, evaluation generation before, and pixels can potentially do more work and then actually most people thought they can do. And uh, it is also generates become effective communication to for disseminating information to the others and so on. So I'm going to give you two very, very quick examples. I'm going to try to use some of the terms you use in the process to illustrate how the visualization may relate to the, 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 uh, the value of information we've been talking about today. And uh, this is uh, a a uh, a problem which we encountered uh, a few years back with glaciologists. Uh, they have a, a relatively small data set, and, uh, and they have uh, been monitoring uh, Greenland uh, glaciers, about 200 glaciers, for roughly about 10 years. And they collect a database, and, uh, and they usually analyze the time series graph on the top. And uh, well, what you see is they find difficult to work with that every time you can only display about 10 of them out of 200. And quite often, and you can't relate it one, compare one with another because you lost the spatial information. Then they say, we better do it in a spatially. So as they plot them dot into uh, uh, along uh, uh, the coastline of the Greenland, that's where the glaciers are. And then uh, using the color to indicate whether glaciers are advancing or retreat, or just means have more ice or less ice. And uh, the problem created is you can't compare from one year to another year easily. You may identify blue dots there, over there, but you're not sure which dots related to here. So it's really taking a lot of time to looking for things. And, uh, and they keep saying we need the map. And then we keep need the map. And after a while, we actually working with them, we realize, and those guys don't really need the map. And this is the information they don't really need. And uh, so the information they really need is much more, is, is the information they can't remember, I can't compare, can't see easily. So you probably can't see the picture very well. Uh, but what we did is we realized, once we realized the map, wasn't that too important to them because of those guys been working with Greenland data for 10 years, they know the Greenland geography by heart. And they have a model already as a, as a feature set. And once you have a model, then you can concentrate on the data. So in this case, we projected the data from the coastline of Greenland to a ring. So we reduce the two dimensional uh, data requirement, spatial requirement for each data point to one dimensional angular on the, on the, on the, on the ring. Then that allows free the one dimension for time. So we can plot the, the times of uh, the years in that way. And, uh, and uh, so you, we managed to plot the, the 200 glaciers with 10 years in just one single picture. The first time they saw the picture, 
The first thing to notice is that the patterns were very regular on the top, and which they consider that pattern is unusual. So use the term we talk about uh, the early on, it is like a piece of information with a minimal entropy because it doesn't really happen that often. And, uh, and they notice that, they say that that can't be. So someone wants to look at the database, they say, oh, we made a copy and a pasting error. And uh, which, if we're using the errors case, and uh, which is they, they're using, they, they initially, they hypothesize and they say, we perhaps should change our model, change our the distribution from P to Q, but then they check it, they make it, so they say, no, no, our original way of thinking is correct, so the P was reasonably good. But they did change some other part of the, uh, the, the, uh, their conclusions about data, which I'm not going to detail because they are very domain specific. So in that case, you can see the, the, the way the visualization really helped uh, the, the domain experts in terms of finding the useful information and the benefits. And, uh, and uh, they can do it if they know what to find. If they, they look at the database, they know it. The visualization didn't really tell them they have an error in the database. And uh, it's, the, it's the visualization connected with their models in their head somehow makes this happen in some way. And another uh, uh, scenario which we have is uh, the video surveillance. And, uh, and there are many, many, uh, uh, a huge amount of research effort being put in, into video data. Um, and here are the three uh, uh, scenarios which we have that wasn't designed for the, uh, the unfortunate situation in Boston because uh, I, my slides were written for a long time ago, and I, I do use this case study quite often. But there were three scenarios for people leaving bags in the sea. And, uh, and certainly the recent events in Boston indicating uh, the, the automated computer vision systems simply don't work. And, and in fact, people, uh, if you read the newspaper, there were newspaper articles even after the bombing, and the police actually had to physically watch every single video in order to see the, the, the identified issue. So, so we're nowhere near the technology to auto automatically identify that. If you simply extract them as a key frames, and you couldn't see the difference between these three uh, pieces of information uh, easily. But if you be able to summarize the information, in this case, we summarize the difference information. There's two types of difference information we have. And the first is the information wasn't in the original scene, so that's indicated by green. So green is indicating uh, something wasn't in the original video. Video is being somehow abstracted into a hot, uh, the hostile pattern. So that's the first frame. I'm moving from first frame to the last frame for the time second. And that indicates the green color comes in and, uh, and the which wasn't original in the sea and so on. And uh, the, the dots on the green shape indicated something is moving. So it's sort of a local difference indicating there are motion patterns involving in that. And then with that, you can easily identify some structures information you have. You see that the branching effect, when something motion and been branching out to something not in moving, and something is continuing to move. And that using the models, as PH said early on, and you can you know that there's someone here left something in the scene. And uh, continue that pattern, and you can also see there were merge situation when something in motion coming back and pick up something which involved in that as well. There were also strange patterns occasionally, and those patterns most people don't have a model. But you can learn it, you can teach people to say, ah, if every time you see this shape, that shape indicating the person actually put something on the ground and walk around in a box or 330 degrees and left. Because the two-dimensional projection is meant to show some kind of wavy patterns involving that. So you can learn this kind of models, and, uh, and uh, it's not that difficult to learn, in fact, and they will use it to confirm, and, uh, and the Jew block on the streets can learn that quite quickly within half an hour. 
So now coming back to really the topic, if we know this type of visualization was there, fundamentally is to save time because the video case is really illustrating in the sense you don't need to watch the video. In most of the cases, you only just need to look at a single picture. Glancing a single picture with a little bit more knowledge involved in that is much, much quicker than, the, and than the watching video. And the cognitive load is much, much lower in the algorithm. So that really kind of leading to the question about uh, what is really uh, the, how to measure the quality of visualization. And uh, so I, I quite like the uh, Betson, possibly Betson's <coughs> comments. In fact, on the internet, there were people arguing this may be his uh, uh, quote, maybe not. And, uh, but that, nevertheless, this is a good quote. And the information is the difference that makes a difference. So what happens, in my view, is if you have original data, data may coming from some sources involving in that, the data will be somehow processed to generate visualization. And, uh, and then it comes with some sort of information you have. Then the, the receiver end of the information has to kind of uh, gather that. So the first thing is to emphasize all the information processed by the visualization. In our case, say for example, in the video case, is to highlight uh, the, the, the object which you wouldn't in the original see. So that's the difference. But the difference makes the difference is the later one, and when the structure pattern appears, and uh, and start the people thinking and so on. Some of the difference doesn't really matter; people just ignore it and so on. But other differences become more important. So so there's two level really information we are talking about in this particular case. And, uh, and we try to talk about quality in the two level cases. It's not that easy. In some way, we need to take in uh, very much. Duncan's approach is to break them down in some way. And uh, the definition for the information in the literature is largely focused on the information here, which indicating that the processed information, we attach some semantics to those data in some way. And uh, back into the early discussions, and, and, and remember uh, when uh, Luciano was showing his example, so he mentioned this one is really like and, uh, debating about E2 to E4. And uh, I'm not sure whether Luciano purposely used the term, used the term message at that time. So what I would like is to say, this one should be really ideally called the message. And we have a data and the message and the information. And uh, the difference is when you apply to the theory, you also know that Sheldon entropy really applied here. While the, the relative entropy, which underpins Aries talk, is really all here. There's two different entropies in the first place, and then they actually meant quite a different thing. And, uh, and then we, we sometimes, with the overloaded term, we start mixing everything together. So, well, uh, it is the way we should really not mixing these two informations. In some way, I was wondering some of uh, Luciana's talk with the, with the, the debate will be maybe associated with this the terminology mixing in some way. And uh, in fact, the, the middle band information is not just visualization or message properly, we should call it. There are a lot of messages. There are textual messages, there are books that ought to be written. There are audio information, there are team presentations, and visualizations, just one of them. And they just messages. Are those messages really help you to have impact on you or not? It depends on the individual. Does it make a difference on you or not make a difference on you? Have you heard of this piece of information before or you haven't? What is your existing model or what is your existing uh, probability distribution functions in that sense? And that is related to that aspect that we have. Then on top of that, and then you can think about all those data, whether they are generated by human or whether they are generated by computers, and, uh, and they can be passed along by someone processing that and involving in dealing with the data. And the receiver end actually are also quite different. Sometimes you, visual, you do the visualization for yourself. You just want to see your data or see other people's data look like, 
But at the time, you produce visualization for other people to consume. So that leads to the debate about the chart junk. Chart junk usually works very well here. It doesn't work well here. So there's no need to create chart junk for yourself. And uh, you can create chart junk to help for you convey your messages to the others. And uh, back to uh, the, the Luciana's models, and, uh, and he mentioned the, the Alice and the Bob and the Carol. I actually noticed there's actually four peoples in that particular uh, pipeline. So the first thing is the Alice with the one, let's use the Alice as the original data generator. That's the first person, is the one who owns the data, owns something. And uh, the second one is the data processor person, is the one who processes the person. In, in Luciano's case, actually, is is Alice herself, but could be a different person. Doesn't need to be the same person, so, so you have that. Then uh, over that, then you also have a information standard for sending the information over. So in, in the Luciana case, is the Bob. And uh, the last one is, is really the information receiver, and, uh, and is the carrier. And uh, usually, that two person is always together, you receive the information and you digest it in some way. So you actually have a four people. The four people tend to be often only presented in, in occasionally two, occasionally three, in most of the cases. So for example, if, uh, if I'm the visualization person, I try to give a talk, so I will act as a data processor. I process some other people's data, and then I send the information to you. So I will be taking the second row and the solo row together. If, uh, if, I, if I'm doing the visualization for myself, then I will be taking the rows, all three last three rows together. So, so it's somewhat very much a mixed rows involving in that. Very quickly, and the different school of thought, in fact, are associated with different parts of the pipeline. So they emphasize different parts of the pipeline in some way. And, uh, and uh, in many ways, my con quick conclusion is to say that is they all connected, they all measure the different parts of the quality in some different ways, and sometimes the quality is very easy to measure in one way but not in another. So there's different mechanisms I use, I'm not so in detail. Then uh, my last thought is, uh, is the quality of visual visualization could potentially be extended to the quality of data or information. is really a multi-dimensional kind of task dependent on the whole. And uh, it's much more task dependent in the second half of the pipeline, and uh, where the relative entropy comes in is relatively less task dependent compared to the first part where Shannon entropy involved in that. That's why Shannon said, that I don't really care if people need to be using the data or information for. I'm only worried about sending it over the line. So he, he didn't want to know the task in some way. And uh, on balance, and I believe I have uh, four different uh, school of thought is better than having one, and uh, in improving quality perhaps is not the, the simple as uh, just improving now, it's sort of an endless uh, kind of a task you have to carry on forever. Just say a few more words about the chart junk. Um, you, you you made clear that there was a controversy pro and con, but it wasn't too clear what the arguments are. Okay, so the so the chart junk in the in the in the discussion content point of view is by uh, is led by Tufti is to say those are useless information when you deliver in the visualization. And, uh, and he shouldn't do it. And so he even uh, generalized it to the minimal ink theory, which probably is an overgeneralization and in some way. And, uh, and uh, the, the discussion does he, with- Does he think it's absolutely harmful or? I think he always think it's absolutely harmful. If you read that. Or just the ways to make? Um, I think he, he, he tends to, he tend to mix the, 
uh, to debate together with people using ChatChunk to misrepresent the information. Oh. And, uh, and uh, he, he tends to use that example to say it's harmful. And, uh, and why, at the same time, and probably from his point of view, uh, it is also partially correct in the sense it does harm for it does slow you down when you look at the picture and if you really wanted the, the, what he considered to be real information because our study also find out that it slowed down your video search significantly make you very in terms of uh, uh, psychology also know that the, 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 the problem is take a more cognitive load, load to looking at pictures than looking at the numbers and, uh, and, and in that way so, so that's kind of indicating that was the case. And uh, however, it does demonstrate it's improved memory and even help people remember the number as well as remember the concepts encoded in the, in the individual audition. So there are advantages and disadvantages. It's particularly useful for communicating with others. So you create a visual audition, you want other people to remember. And, uh, and you want other people to receive your concept quicker, and that is actually more effective. Uh, uh, rather than a question, uh, so, uh, uh, an invitation to comment on uh, uh, a field which is so dependent on visualization, which is basically logic, where we uh, do quite a lot of um, uh, diagrams and uh, writing uh, in terms of schemes and so on, but basically there, uh, I, I'm with you about the same time, first point. Um, maybe a second point there seems to be that certain kind of operations become elementary. Think of a truth table. Because you have, you not know, thanks to you can sign that particular way of putting things in a row and in a column, uh, it would be probably less intuitive to do it otherwise. Um, is this sort of a um, uh, symbol manipulation facility something that the visualization that you're talking about facilitates or uh, sometimes uh, hinders, improves. Isn't that something that goes together with uh, basically uh, setting time? I, I just wonder. I think uh, in some way, they, they, I think the problem, uh, you capture the, the essence uh, of which this thing is a hypothesis, not, not quite fully proved, is the, the reason uh, visualization works is partially because the human um, in terms of historical development uh, with engaging in hunting and uh, so on. The, the visual system is extremely powerful, allow you, allow you to notice the anomaly, particularly the danger in early days where the dangerous animals uh, creeping around in the, in the environment and so on. You do notice those kinds of things and, and quite effectively. And the people even comment uh, about 50% of the neurons are kind of connected to our vision system. So, so we actually have a very, very powerful vision system. And, and, uh, and uh, largely, uh, in terms of language, in terms of symbols, in terms of other mechanisms, they were much later in terms of human history compared to our vision system, because they were only a few thousand years old. So that may explain we, we allow to use that in decoding mechanism more effectively. Last one. I wonder if you have something to say about uh, the use of visualization to uh, simultaneously present information correctly and uh, misguide or uh, control the attention of the audience for various purposes. Uh, whether you can separate the, the truthfulness of the content from what people take from it. So, the, so interesting thing is the, the, the visualization does not represent information correctly. So, so in comparison to accuracy, you read in the number, you, you, you run on two decimal points. There's no visualization can do that. And, uh, and uh, so what the visualization does is very much similar to the, my, uh, the concepts, is, is related to the, the difference that makes difference. So what the visualization shows is the difference. You can see the difference straight away. Today, tomorrow, you can see it straight away. But it takes a while for it to work out today, tomorrow, in numbers. So you can see the difference straight away. And that's what the key of the first part of the information, is the shining information part. 
is is really the key. So so that why visualization is effective because theoretically is it effective, not necessarily just to deliver the facts, is effective in deliver the difference. So thank you.